the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. Hacks to help make your body a fat burning machine. Chapter 1 Why do you get fat in the first place? According to the World Health Organization, cases of obesity are more than doubled since 1980 and in 2014. There were over 1.9 billion overweight adults. The recommended daily calorie intake for adult females is 2000 calories and 2500 calories for men. This is actually what the human body requires to function well. To explore the health benefits of keto diet and intermittent fasting, I think that the best way to start is to attempt to understand why we get fat in the first place. Everyone desires to eat some cake, ice cream and any other thing they want and still not gain weight. But have you noticed that some individual seems to gain weight even when they eat very little quantity of food? So what are the real causes of obesity? Why do some people remain thin without making any serious efforts while others struggle not to gain weight or stay away from regaining the lost pound? Basically, several factors determine your high weight. The number of calories you consume, the calories you store in your body, and how you end up burning up the calories. Now, every single one of these factors are influenced by a combination of several factors which includes environment and genes. Also, these two factors can affect you in several other ways like your psychology, how fast your body can burn calories, and your behavior, such as type of foods you desire to consume. Interestingly, the interplay of all the factors mentioned here and others often begin right from the moment of your conception and this way certainly continue all through your life. Understanding the calorie equation. What determines the balance of your calorie stores and also burned? It depends on your genetic makeup, your level of physical activity as well as your resting energy expenditure, the number of calories your body can burn even when you're at rest. You can easily maintain your weight by constantly burning all the calories you consume during the day. However, the moment you consume more calories than you expend, then you will definitely gain weight. Your body stores excess calories as fat, and this fat is also stored within specialized fat cells, known as adipose tissue. This is done either by creating more of them or enlarging fat cells that are often present in the body. So, if you exercise more and end up burning more calories or reduce your food consumption while increasing the calories that you burn up, then your body will also reduce some of the fat stores in your body. Once it happens, then the fat cells in your body will also shrink and this actually includes your waistline. Are there genetic influences? Yes, in fact over 400 different genes have already been identified to be involved in the cases of obesity or overweight issues. However, only a handful of these genes appear to play major roles. But generally, genes in many ways contribute to some of these causes of obesity by affecting satiety, which is the sense of fullness, appetite, food cravings, metabolism, body fat distribution, as well as our tendency to embrace food as a way of dealing with stress. The extent of genetic influence on obesity or weight disorder varies significantly from the individual to the other. According to research, for some individuals, genes are responsible for 25% of the predisposition, predisposition of being obese. Also, for some individuals, the influence of genes is at high at 70% to 80%. One of the best ways to deal with weight issues is to have an idea of the role genes play in your weight. It is most likely that genes are a major contributor to your overweight issues 
if most of the following characteristics apply to you. If you fail to lose weight even when you adhere to a low calorie diet for several months and increase your physical activity. For much of your life, you've been overweight. One or both of your parents or close relatives are overweight. Your chances of developing obesity is as high as 80% if both of your parents are obesity. Well, if you have most of the characteristics below, then genes are likely a lower contributor to you. You are moderately overweight, however, when you adhere to a reasonable diet as well as the exercise programs, you can lose weight. You are highly influenced by availability of food. You tend to regain your lost weight during the holiday season, during moments when you exercise physiological or social problems, or after making changes to your exercise or eating habits. While most of these circumstances indicated that you still have a genetic predisposition to be heavy, it's not really so significant that you are unable to handle with some efforts. Understand that at the end of the spectrum, you can come to the conclusion that your genetic predisposition to obesity is modest. If you have normal weight and it does not increase whenever you fail to exercise regularly or when you eat high calorie foods. Individuals with just moderate genetic predisposition to be obese actually have a great chances of limiting the excess weight by themselves. And they have to do is to consume fewer calories and frequently engage in more vigorous exercise. This set of individuals can possibly maintain this lower weight. The impact of thrifty genes. It's more likely that you never heard of thrifty genes before. During the hunter-gathering days, whenever the crops failed and the prey escaped, our ancestors managed to survive. So how did they do it? Those who were able to store fat surviving during the lean times, while others who couldn't died. This is an evolutionary adaptation which helps to explain why most modern humans, about 85%, still have these thrifty genes. It helps us to conserve energy and store fat. Unfortunately, these thrifty genes are more of a curse than a blessing presently. The reason is that not only is food always available almost around the clock, we also don't expend lots of energy trying to source for the food, harvest or even hunt. Individuals with a strong genetic predisposition to obesity may find it hard to lose weight using the normal exercise and diet therapy. Even when they finally lose weight, they find it extremely difficult to maintain the weight they lost. For, individual, in, for individuals that fall under this category, having the willpower to lose weight is usually ineffective in dealing with their tendency to gain excess weight. In most cases, people with strong genetic predisposition to obesity can maintain their weight loss under the guidance of a doctor. These are the set of people who may need to take weight loss drugs or surgery. How the environment cause obesity? We have seen how genetic factors play a significant role in how we gain weight and also stay overweight. But genetic factors are factors inside us. So are these external factors like environmental factors that contribute to obesity? Yes. These environmental factors have to do with things in our environment that cause us to either eat excess food or engage in a little exercise. When these two are considered, experts are of the view that environmental factors are actually a significant force that's leading the cause of obesity as well as the dramatic rise of recent years. Even before you were born, environmental influences have already come into play. Fatal programming. Researchers often refer to these in utero exposures as fatal programming. For instance, babies of mothers who smoked cigarettes while they were pregnant stand a higher chance of being overweight than others who mothers didn't smoke. This also applies to babies born to mothers who had diabetes. 
Researchers think that such conditions have a way of modifying the growth baby's metabolism in ways that will later show up in their life. What about after the birth of a child? Babies who are breastfed for over three months have a lower chances of having obesity as adolescents when compared to infants who were not breastfed for more than three months. There are also childhood habits. Most of them stick with people for the rest of their lives. For instance, children who consume sugary sodas as well as high calorie and processed foods tend to develop a taste for such products and they often continue to eat them as an adult, which ends up promoting weight gain. What about kids who love to watch television and play video games instead of being active? Well, they are also setting themselves up for a sedentary future. Majority of modern lifestyles promote weight gain and our environmental encourages us to consume more and burn less calories. Technology Presently, our daily lives fail to offer us the opportunity for activity. Even in school, children don't exercise much usually because of cutbacks in physical education classes. Most adults drive to work and most of their days is spent sitting at a computer terminal. We also find it difficult to visit the gym, engage in a sport activity or other forms of exercise because we work long hours. Rather than walk to a local shop, we drive to one-stop mega stores, park very close to the entrance and end up wheeling our purchase in a shopping cart and drive back home too. With the discovery of modern technology such as dishwashers, vacuum cleaners, leaf blowers, as well as other appliances, we barely make any physical effort in handling our daily chores and this also contributes to weight gain. Stress Another factor which experts believe contributes to weight gain is stress. Presently working longer hours with less frequent and shorter vacations is now common. In most families, it even becomes harder to shop, cook and eat healthy foods together as a family since both parents work. With the increased number of child abduction and violent reports we hear each day, this doesn't just increase the stress levels of parents, it even further makes more reluctant to permit their kids to play outside or ride to the park. So parents end up driving their children to play dates with structured activities and this means less activity for children as well as increased stress for parents. People are usually compelled to eat out the run and they end up sacrificing sleep because of time process, such as family work or school obligations which is a contribution that contributes to weight gain. Now you understand why we gain weight and lose our dream shape. Let's take it a step further by taking a look at the ketogenic diet.